Welcome to worship at Christ Church. My name is Nathan Malone. I'm one of the pastors here and we welcome you this time. If you're here in the room, if you're watching online, even if you're watching sometime later, we welcome you to this time. Uh, we hope this will be a, a time, a service in which you draw closer to God. There's something said, there's something sung, there's something done that in some way deepens your relationship with Christ and inspires you to be a part of the mission of Christ. Welcome to this time. This Saturday is a big event for us. It's a community event. It is the Easter egg hunt. If you know, uh, may I invite you to walk your neighborhood and or think about those students, those children that your children go to school with who don't have a church home. This is a great thing to invite them to. It starts at 11 o'clock. There'll be games afterward. There'll be pictures with the bunny. Yes, I know Easter is not about eggs and Easter bunnies, but it is where we meet the culture where they are. And we say to them, we want you. We invite you. We welcome you. So this is a great opportunity to invite them, bring them, come and join them. Let's share in a time with folks in our community this week. Hope you'll be a part of that. Um, we are just a week away from Holy Week, that week that leads us to Easter. A lot of events that go on, services that go on during that week. And if you know of somebody that physically can't be here in person, or they're gonna be out of town, be sure and let them know that we are going to live stream all of our uh, Holy Week services that week. So it is the week that leads us to Easter. It, we remember and we try to experience as much as we can that final week of Jesus' life Here's a video to tell you about those services. Do you know anyone who only watches the last 15 minutes of a movie? Neither do I. For any of us, we want to see and hear what led up to that ending. We want to experience the development of the characters, the storyline, the setting. All of that makes the ending much more meaningful. Now, let's apply that same concept to Easter. I'm so thankful for what we offer here at Christ Church to lead into Easter and help us experience the whole story. The Sunday before Easter is a time of celebration with children parading through our services, waving palm branches. But that's also when we begin looking at the rest of that week. Music with bands, orchestra, and vocalists help us do that. On Holy Thursday, we share in communion and remember Jesus with those first disciples around the table. Then on Good Friday, our choir and orchestra will offer the musical, It Is Finished. Both services are deeply moving. It's only after we have experienced all of this, the joy, the companionship, the bewilderment and despair, that's when we can truly feel the triumph of Jesus' resurrection on Easter morning. That day we come together for all out worship and celebration from the sunrise service through all of our morning worship experiences, each offering a message of hope and new life. Don't miss any of it. See the whole picture, April 2nd through 9th. Immerse yourself in the entirety of Holy Week. As always, we invite you to let us know of your participation in this service. If you're in the room, you can do that at the doorway, whether you're here or not. If you're watching online, go to our church app and open that up. Go to this service and let us know whenever you've been watching it, let us know that you've participated in this and we thank you for that. All right, children, it's time to hear from Miss Mary Beth today and she's got a video she wants to show you. Well, hello and welcome to Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ. And I am so glad that you have joined us today. So kids, gather around and let's just chat for a minute. I want to talk to you today about Vacation Bible School. It is one of my most favorite weeks, and I would love for everybody to come that week. It's June 12 through 15, and it's called Stellar this year. So we're going to sort of outer space and seeing how Jesus' love shines on our life so we can shine His love on others. I've got a real cool video to share with you, so watch this. Five, four, three, two, one. Authority command to internal. Engines off. Opening main door. Let's go! 
and sing together. When all I see is the battle, you see my victory. And all I see is the mountain, you see the mountain move. And as I walk through the shadow, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? Yeah. For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. the power of our God and almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our God you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our God and almighty fortress I have a 
said amen it is my joy to worship together with you this morning my name is Debbie Stokes I serve as your minister of congregational care and I'm bringing to us the scripture for today it comes from the gospel according to John chapter 11 verses 38 through 44 hear now these words Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor for he has been dead for four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
in our worship together, we also give as God has so generously given unto us. Today, we celebrate that we have buses that go to places to pick up people who no longer can drive. These buses are handicap accessible and also your giving makes possible to make the gasoline possible, the insurance possible, all the parts running possible. And you can volunteer as drivers or you may know someone who needs to be picked up and you can let the office know. But we celebrate that your giving makes even these kinds of ministries possible to reach out to people. You may give in a variety of ways. You may give as you exit from this area. You may give online or through the church app, or you may give by mailing it in or bringing it into the church office. Let us pray together. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for church. We thank you for small group classes, for Sunday school, for where people get to know each other. We thank you for the ways of ministry of this church to be able to send vans out to pick people up who may no longer can drive. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together and we thank you for the technology that makes it possible to get the message into the homes or the places where people listen. You speak into our lives powerful and amazing things. You give to us the gift of life and life eternal through Jesus Christ, your son. We thank you that we live with a hope that is beyond our imagining. We thank you, O oh God, that you are the giver of this hope and you are the giver of your peace and your joy, even in difficult times. And you surround us always with your love. We lift up to you today, the people, especially in Mississippi, who are experiencing such great grief and experiencing rebuilding after the tornadoes. We pray for the situation around our world that you may bring your peace that passes all understanding. And we lift up to you this day those who need you, who are going through a season of sickness, to be the great physician alongside our earthly physicians. We pray for those who are going through a season of grief, that you may give your comfort and peace. We thank you for the gift of prayer that opens us up to you and who you are and your transforming power in our lives. And we pray now together the prayer Jesus continues to teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's one thing for you and I to take a journey toward Easter. That's been our focus in this series. We can be rather casual about that, even dismissive of it or somewhat serious about it. It's another thing to think about following Jesus all the way to Jerusalem those final weeks of his life. Can you imagine the roller coaster ride experience that that was for those disciples? I mean, there were times of excitement and joy and anticipation, but there was also times of fear and anxiety and what in the world is going on? One of the fascinating scenes that, that gave them a wonderful example of what was coming at Easter is only shared in the gospel according to John. And it's our focus for today. Reverend Charles Maynard has written a, a great book about this gospel. A storyteller looks at the gospel of John. Some of what I'm sharing today comes from that book. I mentioned it a few weeks ago and I continue to recommend it for individuals and for small groups for study. If, if your small group maybe is looking for something later this spring or in the summer or even in the fall to study together, this is a great option for you. He's got study questions throughout and it, it's a good option. And by the way, I remind you that Charles will be here at Christ Church to preach on April 23rd. That's the week after Fun Day Sunday. I hope you're planning to be here and hear him. Well, in the book, 
After telling about women in his family and in his community stitching quilts together over the years, and people throughout Appalachia and beyond stitching together stories, he writes, John the author has stitched together a mighty telling of the story of Jesus. Interestingly, he does not include any of Jesus' parables, Jesus' stories. Instead, he relates Jesus' life as the story itself. John knows the strongest vessel in which to carry truth is through story. I love that. May I say that again? May I read that again? John knows the strongest vessel in which to carry truth is through story. It's the way we humans remember and communicate. If you want information or truth to survive through generations, wrap it in a story. Well, those of you who know Reverend Charles Maynard, you know he's very good at that. He loves to tell stories because they inspire, they inform, they enrich, they enhance, they entertain, they teach. They are life-sustaining treasures. Think about stories and how they have taught you about life. Stories you still carry with you today. Some you learn from very early ages. Also in his book, Maynard reminds us that John includes seven signs that Jesus did in various settings and situations. Here's a list of those with the titles that Charles has given to them. A wedding wine. That's when some of you will remember Jesus turned over 120 gallons of water into wine. Long distance sign when he healed an official son without even being there, without even going to him. Healing at the pool where he healed that man who had been crippled for 38 years and had waited by that pool. Eating in the wilderness. That's the story of when Jesus fed over, well over 5,000 people with just a small amount of food. A dark and stormy night when he walked on water and brought those disciples safely to shore. Only the blind see. It's when he healed a man who had been born blind and he had the Pharisees all upset about it. And then a resurrection, our focus story today. Charles has some great observations to share about each of those signs. Here's just one example. He connects a detail about Jesus' feeding of that large crowd with a part of Psalm 23 in a beautiful way. No, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to ask him or buy the book. We're also reminded what John tells us at the end of his book why he told this story about Jesus and why he included the seven miraculous signs in his story. From John chapter 20 at verse 30, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his Name. The last of those seven signs is our focus for today, our part of Jesus' story for today. Now, we just read the end of it. If you're not familiar with that story, I invite you sometime today or tomorrow to go back to the beginning of chapter 11 and read from the first verse, read the whole story. In the scene, a friend of Jesus named Lazarus has died. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And by the time Jesus arrived at the scene, Lazarus had been dead for four days. Jesus has a conversation with both of those sisters. And you might ask, why does John record that conversation? Why, why do we need to hear what Jesus said to those sisters? Well, it's, it's, it's kind of obvious when you look at it, when you hear at least this part of the conversation, 
why John included it. Because the question he asked of Martha is not just a question for Martha. John wanted followers of Jesus in his day. Remember, John's writing decades after Jesus was here. And he wants followers of Jesus in his day. And it turns out ever since then to hear that same question, to grapple with that same question. Here they are. In in verses 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? John wants you and me and everybody else to grapple with that question, to hear that question, to know that that question from Jesus is for all of us. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that he's the, that he is God, that he gave you life and that he can help you overcome anything in life that seeks to take life out of you? We all face situations at times. We've had experiences that seek to take life out of us. We don't know if we can go on. Do you believe that Jesus can give you life when those times come? Both, you see, both Mary and Martha believe in Jesus. They believe he's the Messiah. As as they talk to him in this conversation, they say, we believe you're the Messiah. We believe you're the son of God. We would check that off on a test. If it was asked on a test, we would mark, yes, I believe. We can come down to the front of the church and say, I believe in Jesus. But it's obvious from the conversation that they and everybody else in that crowd are resigned to their brother's death. And who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? We all would be. So Jesus says, take away the stone. What? Can you, can you put yourself in that moment? How would you react? What'd he say? Take away the stone. Can you hear all the noise suddenly stop? People have been crying. There have been conversations going on in the crowd. A buzz was going through the crowd because Jesus was there. And he said, take away the stone and everything stopped. You know, it's easy to just read through that scene and move on and not really experience it. I'm inviting you to allow yourself to experience it somewhat. I thought maybe seeing and hearing it in a movie clip might help, and I hope that won't inhibit your imagination. Don't let that uh, quell your imagination about the scene, but hopefully seeing this scene and the way they portray it will, uh, will spark your imagination, will enhance your imagination about it, maybe spark some discussion with others. Some of you know that I've used scenes out of this movie series from way back in 1977 called Jesus of Nazareth. Here's how they portray this scene that we read about this morning. Take away the stone. Give me a hand.
Now those who stand round me may believe that I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me shall never die. I went down into the countries underneath the earth, to the peoples of the past. But you lifted my life from the pit. Lord, my God. Lazarus, come forth. I had to stop the scene right there with that look of astonishment on those disciples. Those are disciples' faces. This is hard to believe. This, this doesn't fit with our experience of life. We shouldn't be too hard on the skeptics, the critics, the atheists. They've got good reason for not believing. If we're just limited to human thinking, if we're just limited to the way we see things, they've got good reasons for not believing. And even most of us are like Martha and Mary. I mean, think about it. We believe in Jesus, but this raising from the dead stuff, well, maybe not so much. It's what we call practical Atheism. We believe in theory, but in the real world, in real life, do you? And so I go back to that question he asked earlier. Do you believe he is the life and the resurrection? Not just about sometime in the future, but in your life every day, in those moments when it seems like all hope is gone, when life is gone, when you've been defeated, when you feel defeated, when you feel like there is no way to turn, do you believe in those moments? That's where, as we say, the rubber hits the road about whether this stuff is real to us or not. I'll leave that with you for now. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a couple weeks. Believe it or not, there's more to the story. There's one other detail about this story that I, I really want you to focus on today. It's the last thing Jesus said to, in what we heard read earlier. After Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb, verse 44 reads, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Other Bible translations read, unbind him and let him go. Jesus invites those gathered around to assist him in giving new life to Lazarus. Now, Jesus has given new life to his body. He's breathing again. Blood is coursing through his veins again, but he can't move. He's, he's bound up by these clothes of death. He can't function like that. He can't really live like that. So here's my question for you and me and everybody else for today. Who are the people around you that Jesus is giving new life and is inviting you to help unbind them?
Is it that individual or family that lives near you? Is it somebody at work? Is it somebody at school? Somebody in the church or somewhere else in the community? Is it a whole group of people? Jesus is inviting you to assist him in giving them new life. Oh, they're alive. Maybe they've been given a, a second chance or a, a new lease on life, as we sometimes say. But there's some things holding them back. There's some, there's some walls. There's some locked doors of some kind that prevent them from living freely and fully. Maybe they just need somebody to come along and, and help them get connected. Maybe they just need someone to just listen to them, to give them some attention, to acknowledge that they even exist. So as you continue on your journey toward Easter, take note of those around you who may also be seeking new life. What is it that has them bound up? What is it that prevents them from experiencing life at its best? It may very well be that Jesus is inviting you and me to assist him in giving them new life. He said to those people gathered around, unbind him and let him go. He still says that today to you and me. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks today for this reminder that you give life, that you give life in real life, in the real world. That it's not something that we just talk about at church, it's not just something that we remember and celebrate from a long time ago, but that you're still in the life-giving business, that you're still seeking to give us new life, but not just for our own selves. You invite us to be looking for those people out there that we go to school with and we work with and we live with and we relate to every day, people who are also seeking new life. And in some cases, you're trying to give them new life, but, but we may have somehow participated in binding them up in some way. And we hear you today reminding us that you invite us to assist you in unbinding them and helping them experience life to the fullest. Guide us to do that. Give us wisdom and courage to do that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you stand and join in singing this last song? And as you do that, hear this invitation. If you're here today and would like to come and unite with the church, I'm gonna be standing here on the front row during the song. If you'd like to profess your faith in Christ or be baptized, for those of you at home, my number is 402-0621. Don't hesitate to call and, and uh, bring those topics up. I'd love to discuss those with you. promises time and time again you have proven you do just what you said though the storms may come and the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast and let my heart learn when you speak a word it will jump to pass it out great is your faith setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness to me seasons change you remain From age to age, though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. 
Would you bow with me? Almighty God, you have filled us today through your Holy Spirit. We have sung of our faithfulness, your faithfulness. Now come and go with us. That all of the feeling, all of the spirit that we have experienced in worship, we will live out in the world, the real world. In Christ's name, amen.